Hello and welcome once again to Jump To It for irishracing.com where in today's show we've got plenty of tips and advice for this weekend's action at Sandown and a couple of races at Haydock as well. Now my guests today need not much introduction. We've got Ed Quigley and betting experts own Stephen Harris. Chaps, are you well? Yep, yeah, fitting well, Joe, thanks. thanks. Great stuff. Stephen, it's been a while actually since we've spoke, so I uh, just wanted to let you, well, just ask how it's going in terms of the tipping front on betting expert lately. Yeah, the tipping's been surprisingly good, uh, Joe, to be honest with you. Thank you for asking. It's good timing. We, we had a 10 to 1 nap yesterday. I think we had a 20 to 1 winner earlier in the week. So, yeah, ticking along nicely at the moment. I'm sure it'll come to a abrupt halt sooner rather than later. But it looks, it looks cracking racing this weekend. We've got soft ground at Haydock and fast ground at Sandown, which is something to bear in mind. And uh, Ed, as well, last time we spoke, we were ahead of the Irish Derby. So just give us your thoughts and summations of how that meeting went at the Curra for you. Yeah, it was great action, wasn't it? Really enjoyed it. Some really good stuff. Obviously, Statuette, uh, she was uh, one of the star performers. She's into favourite for next year's Thousand Guineas. But the actual Irish Derby itself, yeah, as you say, Westover, absolutely pulverising the field. Really impressive performance. And uh, that tees things up nicely uh, for Ascot in three weeks' time. The, the rematch is on according to Connections, uh, Westover against Desert Crown Part 2 uh, in the King George uh, with last year's Derby winner Adio due to return as well. So, yeah, don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but uh, that was a really good performance in itself by Westover, um, but it does set, th set things up nicely for future targets ahead. Beautiful stuff. All right, then, chaps, let's dive straight into the racing for this weekend. And uh, we're going to start off with the 150 at Sandown. So we are going to start off with some racing at Sandown. Like I say, the 150 kick us off. The 150 uh, is the Coral Charge. So only five furlongs, a mad dash uh, to the uh, to the line here. Uh, Stephen, I'm looking at the favourite now, uh, eight wins over the distance, but you're not looking at, at the favourite maybe for your selection in the race. Take us through it. Yeah, well, rassell has been a fantastic, typical, brilliant advert for both Mick Appleby and for the Horse Watchers. Um, who own it, very shrewd lads, the Dixon brothers, of course, are always on television. And Rasso has been a revelation, really. He's a hard puller, but he's been tanking through his races. I'm not sure about Sandown. I must admit, it, it, the middle course there has got a very stiff uphill finish. Um, I'm not sure it's a speedball sort of track, and maybe he'll be vulnerable in the closing stages. The one I liked here, and it's probably a each way play, uh, Joe, is Arecibo of Robert Cow. Now, Robert Cow doesn't have that many horses these days but he's always done really well with his sprinters um, and Arecibo's run twice at Sandan in a longish career and has finished second each time so has run blind as the track's no problem he started off this season needing the run first time out and seventh and I thought he was a huge eye catcher when he finished third in the temple at Haydock that form's pretty strong twilight calls finished second come out and run a screamer at Royal Ascot. And he was a bit unlucky that day, among others, who were also unlucky. It was a bit of a messy race. You have to forgive last time. I must admit, I had him winning. He was one of those Royal Ascot horses. You can't believe what a massive price he was. He was 80 on uh, the, the uh, SP, but he was much bigger than that on the exchanges. I had him winning a few quid. He never took part. He was out class. But this is his level. Um, I think he'll be in the first three with any luck in runnies. Seven or eight to one. Everything should be in place for a big run. And Ed, I know as well, you're not looking at the favourite, maybe. What's putting you off, Razel, and uh, looking at your value angle in the race? Yes, it just feels like he's in much deeper waters here today, doesn't he, Razel? He's, he's been mm. kind of just getting there by the skin of his teeth. They are tricky the way up, those horses, sometimes, because they just keep winning by small margins, but they're actually kind of keeping a bit to themselves, and sometimes they just keep on improving, and you don't quite know where the ceiling of their ability is. But I just thought this was a deep enough race. Uh, in truth. So I've kind of gone for one, a bit of a big, bigger price, more or less the outsider of the field in method. Uh, there is some method to this madness as well, who also has gone off the boil recently. But uh, I just thought coming back to five furlongs was the really interesting angle here. He's only once run over the five furlong trip and was runner up in the Cornwallis uh, to Winter Power, which was really smart form. Just not sure he quite gets the six furlongs. I mean, the horse is bred to get two miles, but quirk of breeding. I actually think this horse is all speed and uh, I'll be really interested. Back to the minimum trip, the stiff five, I think will probably suit. As I said, on that horse's Cornwallis form, uh, he's entitled to be playing a part here. And if you look on official figures as well, 
it's not really all that far off them, uh, officially rated 102. So I just thought Method, Tom Marcond, who's riding out of his skin at the moment, uh, I just thought was the, the value call in what is a, is a pretty intriguing race, it has to be said. Lovely. All right, let's move on to the next race on the card at Sundown, the 225, the Coral Challenge, a handicap. 11 declared, of course. Now, Sinjari is your favourite going into this one. But, Stephen, take us through it. I mean, does there any other name kind of on the card pick the stand out for you? Or is it a worthy favourite, do you think? Well, Sinjari is one of those horses I think has got the clear form claims, but is a very short price now. Ran so well when finishing fifth of 29 at the Royal Meeting. That was probably a career best effort. Running well, fast ground suits must go well. But he's under three to one now. I was looking at Lion Tower. Nothing flash about him, but he's trained by a really good northern trainer in Grant Tour. He's had five winners in the last 14 days. He's chugging along really nicely. He's improved a lot of horses from other yards. And this one's basically run himself fit through the last few months and was quite impressive at York, coming from well off the pace, finishing strongly in a fast run race. He has gone up to a career high mark now. He's up three pounds. Uh, to 93 but i think he'll be competitive um he'll stay well i actually think although he won at york i think the stiff up he'll finish at sandown will suit him and he's another one of these horses he looks sure to run well and he's around six or seven to one i think for looking at the moment yeah it's a nice value there i mean looking at the favorite as well so sinjari uh sinjari i just want to point out that it's not really one that many races only two in 18 starts uh, so i wonder why it actually would be favorite um, can you just Stephen, take us through well, why you think it is the favourite at the moment. He's one of these horses who runs in all the big Saturday handicaps. He's off a mark of sort of in the 106, 105, and he always gives his running. So unfortunately, Joe, he doesn't get any respite from the handicap. He's got him pegged. He keeps running blind as he keeps attracting support, um, and, and he doesn't actually win. I mean, I do think if he's the sort of horse, it's all prices, isn't it, betting? Uh, if he was five or six to one, I think he'd be a really good bet, but he's actually five to two. So he, perhaps he is his price because everyone saw him run so well at the Royal Meeting. I think that's fair enough. Uh, good shout. Uh, Ed, any input on this race or should we just move on? No, just generally, I would be against Sinjari at the price. Uh, this horse hasn't won for two years, whichever way you want to slice it. So straight away, yeah, the horse keeps running really well. The last win came off 95 run some stormers in defeat in races twice as good as this but the bottom line is he's now 10 pound higher doesn't get in the winners enclosure much so at five to two not for me i think the horse could run an absolute stormer again be beaten half a length and uh, probably go up a pound for it so nothing against sinjari just at the prices as stephen says uh nine to two five to one mm, i want to get involved but five to two uh not for me uh any day of the week Good stuff. All right, let's speak of a value pick. Let's move on to the next race we want to look at. Uh, Stephen, I know you picked out some value here in the three o'clock in the Dista for the Phillies, uh, looking at the John Gosden and Ryan Moore pairing. Yeah, I quite like Grand Dame here. Three runs, uh, winning on debut despite doing loads wrong at Ascot, pulled hard but still quickened up really smartly, like a smart uh, Philly. Uh, and then I, I thought it was a probably another Detory area. When she got beaten at York next time, 13 to 8 favourite, very well backed, again a little bit free. Uh, and last time you have to forgive, but it was in a group one at Royal Ascot behind In Spiral, her stable mate, and she got Jamie Spencer, Joe. She, she was dropped out, pulling hard, didn't settle out of the ground, and then disappeared off the track when he sh shook her up three furlongs out. I, I didn't think she ran as badly as it looks on paper. This is a much easier race. She should have loads more improvement, and the yard. They're absolutely flying, despite their well-publicised ruck with De Tory. They've had eight winners in the last 14 days, John and Tady Gosman. So they're still flying along. I, I thought the favourite, Heredia, is another one. Sure to be popular, all those ones against her name and landed quite a gamble at the Royal Meeting in the Sandringham. Um, again, pulled hard in that big field, but quickened up smartly. This is a different kind of race, a smaller field. Um, I thought she was short enough on form, five to four, six to four, and I much prefer Grand Dame, who was four or five to one. I mean, you could back her each way if you get if you get five to one on Saturday. I think that'd be a good bet. Remarkably, Joe, I usually moan about. I know it's hard to believe. I usually moan about these Saturday races. There's eight runners in the first, and there's eight runners here. Surely the bookmakers won't stand for that. There'll be there'll be someone on the blower, won't they? Stra through to one of the trainers. Come on, we better get one of these taken out. Eight runners on a Saturday with ITV covering it. It can't possibly happen, can it? <laughs> That's unheard of. Um, Ed, uh, take us through some of your thoughts on the race as well. Uh, are you against the favourite here, or do you think Heredia should be uh, the worthy favourite here? 
Yeah, I don't know. I need to come up with some more conspiracy theories like uh, Stephen, really, don't I? <laughs> I've got you, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm well aware. I'm well aware. Uh, <laughs> a, a race to be honest with you, I'm yeah, splinters in my backside. I'm fence sitting here. Uh, I Heredia rapidly improving. I bet Stephen does say Sandringham kind of chalk and cheese in terms of that event to this. I don't really know is the answer, so I'm um, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I'll just take Stephen's word on this. I'm I'm happy to sit this one out. Lovely stuff. All right, well, let's move on to the next race where I think you've got a bit more of a stronger opinion. Of course, the Coral Eclipse, the big one, the Group One uh, race of the weekend. Uh, so yes, yeah, so Ed, start off with you then. What's your thoughts on the race? I think this is absolutely stunning, isn't it? As far as six runners go uh, to attract this quality of field. I mean. Lord North's your 25 to 1 outsider of the field. He's a multiple Group 1 winner. You know, Mishrif, 125 rated horse. Alenka's won two of his last three. Uh, he's a Group 1 winning performer. Native Trail representing the classic generation as well. Uh, Bay Bridge, of course, took the field apart in the Brigadier Gerard before finishing runner up at the Royal Meeting. It's just this is absolutely stacked of quality. But I do think the one they've got to beat is Vadani, who really looks to be. Uh, progressing at a rapid rate of knots. Uh, stepped up to 10 furlongs last time out in the French Derby, and, I mean, they didn't see which way he went. I mean, it was kind of push-button stuff. Came absolutely swinging uh, under Christophe Soumillon. Went five lengths clear, eased down. Could have been 55 lengths. Uh, look, the form itself, you know, it, yes, it's a, a group one, and it's the French Derby. Beating now Bodegon and Modern Games five, six lengths. In context, probably isn't strongest in the purest form, but it was the way he did it. I mean, it was effortless. You don't really see Group 1's won in that fashion. So I thought it was a terrific performance. If there was going to be one slight worry uh, with Vidani, it would only be the ground. Uh, I mean, Stephen's not a million miles away from Sandown. I know they had a little bit of rain earlier in the week. I'm, I'm just hoping it doesn't go too quick. The one thing he's never really encountered is uh, ground like a runway. You know, it was pretty soft at Chantilly last time out. Uh, he's got winning form on good, but uh, if it became genuine summer good to firm and tarmac, that would pose a big unknown to him but given the way he's quickened up I don't see a lot of evidence to suggest he probably wouldn't handle it so I just think I think he's really exciting I think this is a great race in, in truth this really is exciting you know people moan about small fields but uh, I think to get six horses of this caliber here I'd rather that than 11 with four or five also runs just making up the numbers uh, uh, you know apart from potentially the derby winner running in this this is a bit of the who's who with the top rated uh, pretty much around Europe at the moment over this trip, isn't it? So, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I think Vidani wins. Native Trail might be the next best in for me. Uh, I just think that horse looks crying out for 10 furlongs. Uh, so I'm, I'm genuinely with the classic generation here, the more unexposed three-year-olds. But uh, it, one of those races wouldn't be shocked if any of them won it. But I'm, I am with Vidani on balance. So, Ed, obviously looking at the favourite and the second favourite in the market. But, Stephen, yeah. you're happy to swerve those. Uh, so, give us why and uh, what, which horse are you looking at? Well, I think Ed's summed that up perfectly, really. The only thing I find with Vidani is the ground, and he's right. Because it, we had a shower last night. I mean, he's just uh, Sandown's down the road, a mile away. Um, but that's it. I mean, they've been watching. We had the sprinklers on early in the week, Andrew Cooper. It'll be rattling fast ground. It will be. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. We've had about two inches of rain in the last three months here. Um, and I think the favourite will drift. Uh, the, the, the UK public, probably wrongly, won't take seven to four about a French raider who's all his forms on soft ground. I know it was good officially last time when he won, but and he has got a good ground winner earlier in his career. But you do suspect that, you know, the, the, the fastest he's ever run is a French good. Well, this is going to be good to firm. He'll probably be faster than that, to be truthful. So he's got a massive question mark to answer on Ratnick against proven fast ground performers. I mean, I don't think Lord North's got an earthly and I don't think Mishriff will be right. I, I don't fancy those two. So I think there's uh, four realistic winners. The one I prefer is Bay Bridge, who was so impressive in the Brigadier Gerard when reportedly 80% fit, quickened up and stormed up the hill. It was very impressive. And he was duly sent off a very short price favourite at Ascot, Royal Ascot I was on. Um, at first glance, uh, he was disappointing, but... He, he, I think it was just one of those Ascot races. State of Rest got a brilliant ride from the front by Moore, got the far rail, and it happened quite a few times over the five days. They were impossible to dislodge front running on that track. And Baybridge had every chance, was just one pace for pressure. But I still think he, he ran his race. And the stiff uphill finish at Sandown will suit him. He should now be spot on third run back. I think four to one is a blinding price. And I, I agree with Ed. I think that native... 
Um, Trail is a big runner. I think one mile two will definitely suit him. He hasn't impressed everybody in both recent runs. He, he got chinned by Caribus in the Guineas. Um, I thought he was slightly disappointed, and he made hard work of it in Ireland, but that, that's him. He, he's a galloper, a grinder, rather than an explosive quickener uh, now, and I think one mile two will suit him. At the moment, I'm thinking of having a really good bet on Baybridge, half saving it with native trail, and uh, it sounds mad, but I think the favourite will end up being three to one, and if that's the case, I'll come back on the favourite and save my money. But uh, I think at the moment, for, for irishracing.com listeners, um, the move is to back the, the two form horses with fast ground form and maybe come back on France uh, close to the off. Fantastic. Great summary and uh, well explained as well. So obviously, yeah, keep an eye on the markets closer to the off because uh, uh, things might change uh, quite a lot from the time of filming. All right, now we're, we've done Sundown. We're now going to move over to Haydock where we've got a couple of races to feature. So starting off with the Lancashire Oaks. Uh, Ed, take us through it. I mean, how would you see this card lining up and uh, which which filly or uh, mare takes your fancy? Well, free wind uh, for the Gosford team's likely to be favourite. Uh, I just wonder if she's slightly overrated. Uh, you know, I it was a pretty emphatic win in that Group Two. <coughs> excuse me, the Park Hill Stakes last time out. But I thought the race fell apart to some extent, and uh, that was on the game. We've spoken about the ground. It was very, very quick ground at Doncaster that day. Officially, uh, this is going to be a totally different kind of ball game. Uh, it, it's soft at the time of recording at Haydock. I believe there's more rain on the way as well. So this will pose a totally different question of her, which will be absolutely no problem at all for a Sharda, representing Roger Varian and Jim Crowley. This filly loves soft ground. Obviously, she won on Champion Day. She won the Group 1, <coughs> excuse me, the fillies and the mares. Plenty of give underfoot. She blows a bit hot and cold. Her profile suggests that. It's got a great one minute, majestic, and then awful. Uh, however, uh, her best performances have coincided with plenty of give underfoot. And I thought oh, she... I mean, I'm no kind of paddock judge, but I'm told uh, on a comeback run at Newbury, she looked as though she would say, how should we say, strip for to for the outing um, when well beaten at Newbury on quick ground. I think this is much more her kind of cup of tea. She's had that run. The Roger Faring team also, it's worth noting, they're in a bit of the doldrums back in May. They went uh, bizarrely quiet at the time. They've really clicked. They, they've basically been operating at a winner a day for the last three weeks. So Faring team are flying again, soft ground. She's had that run. Uh, under about she's a group one winner here uh, in this group two i think she's the class act and i think with conditions crucially in her favor that will, will tell her a respect free win but i think the best of a sharda is the best in here and uh, she gets the nod from me and for you stephen i mean are you going with free wind here or are you back in edda with a sharda no I, th I virtually agree with ed completely there's just one other <coughs> i want to add in but um the favorite free wind all um Form Her form is on fast ground. She did win at Doncaster on good to soft, but I actually watched that back this morning because I knew we were going to talk about this race. And she was absolutely going nowhere two furlongs. That got a very, very hard ride to land the odds. She was 13 away on that day. I don't think she wants soft ground. Um, she improved on quicker ground later on in the season. And obviously she hasn't had a run, which the others have, which is, which is a big question mark. I completely agree with Ed about Ishada who I think was 4-5-1 to one earlier in the week. That was a very fair price. Varian's absolutely flying now. Should be fitter for that first run. Soft ground ideal. But the one I like at a slightly bigger price is Kawida of Ed Walker. Ed Walker, four winners from his last 19 runners in the last fortnight. And Kawida was a soft ground Haydock winner last season, albeit 9-4 to four on, but clearly handles the ground really well. And I thought she ran a really good race in the Oaks, which is very strong form. Tuesday, Nashua, it's working out brilliantly. And she was far from disgraced at a huge price. This Karma Waters will suit her. I think the firms have priced this race up earlier in the week with no liquidity, no money changing hands. And I think Kawida's a massive price. And I think you probably back Kawida and, and Ed's selection as well. Because um, I suspect the favourite will be very easy to back on soft ground. First time out, must have had problems not to have reappeared up to now. Um, I think if you back Ishada and Kawidi, you might have the race by the orchestras, Joe. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Well, great summation there, guys. Now, I think we're going to cover the last race on uh, well, the programme today. is again at Haydock, and we're going to be looking at the Old Newton Cup. So, Ed, your long shot goes in this one. Take us through it and your thoughts going into the race. Yeah, wide open event, but uh, <clears throat> looking for one to meet your value. Uh, around the, the 12 to 1 mark, Brentford Hope is a horse who... 
Do you know, he was one-time Derby favourite, believe it or not, with a few firms. It's funny how careers work out, don't they? Um, he's always been a horse who's threatened to win a big pot, but Richard Hughes has said, we've basically just got to hunt the ground with him. He, he can't have it soft enough, really. All his best forms come on soft. I remember the day he won at Nottingham. I think it might have been Jamie Spencer on board. He had about nine pairs of goggles on uh, as he kind of came back into Winners' Enclosure, all, all, all hanging around him, covered in mud. And, um, he's, look, it's officially soft at the moment. There's more rain on the way. It's only going to enhance his chances, basically, the more it rains. And uh, I just thought at this track, he's one from one. So the track holds no fears. Conditions will be fine. Uh, Dion LaRue, who uh, rode the first winner under rules recently, is in the saddle claiming seven. Uh, so Richard Hughes given a big vote of confidence for this uh, young individual who's clearly uh, well touted. And that seven pounds could make a huge difference here. In theory, brings the horse into it off a mark of 98 if you take his claim into uh, account. And off 98, it, I think he'd be a very well handicapped horse. Uh, it's, it's a case of conditions rule all with Brentford Hope. Uh, on good to firm, he'd be a, a 50 to 1 poke. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked if the rains do continue to arrive, his price contracts, because he is a, a genuine mudlark in here. And we know Haydock can get really testing. Uh, the one unknown would be a mile and a half or extended mile and three furlongs. This is to be pedantic. Uh, he's been kind of around the mile, mile two. He did try a mile and a half once in his really early days, and it was inconclusive as to whether he got it. But I thought recent evidence, especially what we saw at Goodwood last time out, suggested that as he, like, like all of us, Joe, we get a bit slower as we get older. And I just think he's worth a crack at a mile and a half on soft ground. He's He's got everything right for him. If he drops out the back of the television here, uh, I, I think they'll be scratching their heads as to where to go with him. So I think Brentford Hope uh, with D Dion LaRue on board, claiming seven. Uh, yeah, in my each way play, I'll be disappointed if he was out of the frame. All right. I think that's a yeah, really good summo uh, summary of your tip. Uh, but let's actually round up the today's edition of jump to it and get to our tips so Stephen, i'll start with you we've covered them all during the races but just take us through your nap your value angle and your long shot please yeah um my betting expert daily nap joe runs in the 335 the big race the coroner clips bay bridge i think four to one nine to two is a fantastic price he's a sand down horse on fast ground i think he'll power up the hill and go really close um the betting expert value angle selection runs in the three o'clock grand dame um, hopefully four or five to one. It ha she has shortened up a bit. Um, I didn't think her Royal Ascot run behind in Spiral was as bad as it looks, and she looked very progressive on fast ground before that. And the long shot was Arecibo in the dash, the opener. Um, Robert Cow does really well with sprinters, does really well at Sandown. Arecibo's run twice here and run really well in defeat twice. And I thought he was really unlucky in the Temple and had no chance in the King's Stand. So, yeah. Hopefully he'll be eight or ten to one and we can have a good weekend on the back of it. Just to come back to Brentford Hope, I think it's the first time Ed's tipped him up and I think he's right. It's the first time I haven't tipped him in, a, in about ten runs. I haven't drawn once. So he is a horse who's been Jamie Spencer a few times. Uh, Richard Hughes has finally given up on that project. And I suspect that the lad riding, who sounds like he should be playing at Glastonbury rather than riding at, uh, at Haydock. Um, I think Brentford Hope is a really good shout. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Well, best of luck to you in your tips. But Ed, just take us through your selections as well. Obviously, you covered Brentford Hope, but just uh, sum up the rest, please. Yeah, yeah. Brentford Hope in the old Newton Cup, and then um, yeah, Method uh, back to five furlongs. I just wonder if they've got the had the trip wrong with this horse coming back to a stiff five. To say the one time he ran over five, he wasn't beaten far at all behind a good horse in a Group Three. He's in a Group 3 here, back to minimum trip, and he's pretty much the outsider of the field, and he's got a nice draw. So I like method there. And then, yeah, Vidani, I know Stephen's, you know, sending out the alarm bells. There might be a hosepipe ban in the uh, niche area. I'm worried about state of Stephen's petunias and all sorts of, uh, you know, there's been two millimetres of rain in, in seven months down, uh, down in uh, sunny, sunny southwest London. Uh, but, um, no, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Apart from that, I think Vidani's got all the gears. and look, There's no real evidence to suggest Vidani doesn't act on good firm, but I do take it on board. There's no evidence in the book yet to suggest he does. But everything else about him, just uh, he just reeks of superstar to me. So I'm with Vidani. The horse does drift uh, north of kind of 5-2 to two or into 3-1, to one, and I might be getting really heavily involved. But uh, yeah, so Vidani, mm. Method, Brentford, Hope. That's my uh, three for the Saturday. Perfect. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Ed and Stephen. Of course, we'll be back next week for more tips and more betting advice as well. If you do follow the advice of our experts, please do gamble responsibly, but be sure to tune in next time for Jump To It here on irishracing.com.